Today is going to be a great episode because I'm going to explain to you how I decided on any electrical circuit I was going to have in this cabin and then we're going to go through the installation of every single one of this circuit to make sure that you really understand how this is put together. I mean I know this is a long video but it's going to be jam-packed with very valuable information which you will want to know if you plan on ever doing electrical work in a cabin or a small house like this. So before you run to Lowe's and buy an electrical panel and wires and all sorts of stuff, you have to plan ahead how many circuits you're going to have and what are they going to serve, how many lights, how many receptacle, water heater, uh, mini split. You need to really think about everything beforehand. So that's why I put this on the ball, which you can recognize is the floor plan of this cabin. And we're going to walk through every circuit that I've thought I would need and, and really show it to you on this ball. So I'm actually going to put my electrical panel here in this wall. Uh, I decided that would be probably the best spot. So I got a 100 amp main panel, but obviously this is going to be installed as a sub panel because we will be connected back to the house. I mean, how do you even attach it? I said there had stuff on the side, but I don't see it. So after searching long enough in the instruction, sure enough, I did find the holes on the side. Aha, I got you. Allez. So the thing to keep in mind is that your panel actually needs to be flush with your finished wall. So it needs to stick out by three quarter of an inch to match my tonguing groove. Yeah, this is never going to work. The holes are like right at my three quarter of an inch. So it's not going to work. So thankfully there's always another way to do something and if you add blocking between your wall stud you will be able to use that to connect the back of your panel to it directly. So definitely verify that your panel is sticking out by the right amount because this is actually a cut requirement so you don't want to mess that up. And then the other thing you want to make sure is which way should you orient your panel. Is your main power going to come from up or down? In my case the main power will be coming from down so you see that my main breaker is on the lower side. So let's start with is circuit number one. So I decided that circuit number one was going to be all of the lights in this cabin uh, as well as all of my receptacle meaning all my outlets that are going to be kind of you know sprinkle on the walls a little bit everywhere. So I'm going to have one on each side of the bed and so typically that's what they're shown on the electrical plan. It's just a circle with two lines in the middle. I'm going to place one here on the side of the window. I'm going to have another one here. Then I'm going to place one here, one here, and then another two. So there are code required rule, uh, which is you can't have more than uh, I think six feet between those uh, outlets. So that's why I'm kind of like putting a bunch. And again, let me show you uh, the electrical wire is going to connect them all like that, one after the other, uh, just like this. So those are all of my outlet. But as I mentioned, I also want all my lights connected to uh, this plan as well. And so I had to kind of think through how many lights do I want in this cabin. So I decided that I would go with spotlights uh, because you know you can dim them and they look pretty good. Uh, so I'm gonna go with that. I decided that I was gonna put six of them on this side. Uh, it's just a circle with an awl for those uh, recess light. So I'm gonna have six on this side of the cabin. So, you know, just nice and symmetrical, just like this. And then here I'm kind of gonna mirror this and I have, uh, you know, another fall. Uh, you know, two above the kitchen and two here. In addition to those lights, I would like to have a ceiling fan so I'm gonna have a ceiling fan right over here, the seating area where you know there's a couch and I don't know what else I'm gonna put there, but I'm gonna place a ceiling fan, which is just a circle, two lines, and you know, CF for ceiling fan. Uh, and the last light I thought about is I'm gonna have some sort of chandelier, or, you know, just a hanging light right here above the dining area. So I thought that would be, you know, I don't know. This probably is, you know, a decent idea of like all the lights. I think this is going to be pretty good. Uh, so now I have to connect them all to the circuit. Here I'm going to have a Fongang box with Fong switches. So the first one is going to feed to all those recessed light, just like that. I'm going to connect them all. 
here you go. So that's the first switch. The second switch is gonna control the ceiling fan. So now, I mean, you know, you could have two switches, one for the light, one for the fan itself, but you know, I'm kind of lazy. So what I would rather do is I'm gonna buy a ceiling fan that has a remote control. So then I only need one switch to kind of pour the thing on and then people can just decide, you know, hey, I want the light, I want the ceiling fan on. Uh, so anyway, I just thought they would be easier. And then the third one is gonna go to this chandelier. And then I'm adding two lights right here you know, on the front of the cabin by the front door, one on each side of the door, and this is gonna get connected to that fan switch. So here's my first circuit. This circuit here is gonna be uh, 20 amp, and so I'm gonna put it on a 12-2 wire. And it needs to be arc fault protected, AFCI. That is part of the code requirement, so I will have to put a special breaker for this circuit. I'm measuring here 12 inches, which will be the bottom of my outlet. After you can see that I'm using this plastic thing, this is actually to make my outlet as airtight as possible. Those little electrical box have little lips here. That's for half an inch if you're gonna put sheetrock. In my case, I'm gonna use tongue and groove, so I need my electrical box to stick out by three quarter of an inch. Be careful when nailing it in, because honestly, those box are pretty cheap and they will break easily. After that, you just wanna keep going around the room, place your outlet at the same height, choose which stud you're gonna place it on and then just keep going with the same process. So we've got all the outlets. I'm gonna place the switch. Apparently the top of the switch is 48 inches. Unfortunately, they didn't make those plastic thing long enough so I was gonna end up using two pieces instead. Oh, and do you remember what I said about being careful when nailing those in? Ha <laughs> ha! Oh man, did you see that? Well, that's it. Ah, you gotta be me. So luckily enough, I had another one of these laying around. Whew, always nice to save a trip back to Lowe's. So now you can extend this. The side needs to come out. I mean, this isn't great, but we'll put a bunch of silicone everywhere. So then you wanna measure where you're gonna place your holes because you're gonna want your wire to be as horizontal as possible. Then it's the firm part of drilling holes. And I recommend using one of those uh, type of spade. They work really well and are a blast to use. Oh, you see that? Wow. So with all the studs I put in those corners, it was actually a big pain to try and drill through them. I mean, I tried all sorts of contraption, eventually got my bits stuck in there, uh, and it took me a solid probably 15 minutes to finally get it out. <sighs> Would you think you were going? Then I needed to make a hole in that plastic cover, then poke a tab off, and then I was ready to finally fit the wire through that hole into the wall. There'll be more tabs you'll have to remove on the electrical panel so that you can fit the wire directly into a slot. Part of the code requirement is that you will have to staple those wires into place uh, actually pretty close to the electrical panel and also right next to the box where the wire is going into. So after bringing the power to that first outlet box, I was ready to branch off on the right side because if you remember, I will have outlet on both the right side and the left side of that first box. With a three quarter of an inch hole, the corner was so difficult to manage. So after that, I actually upped the hole size to one inch and it went much easier. So at this point, I mean, the process keeps getting pretty repetitive. You really just go from one outlet to the other, making your hole, getting your wire through, and then you just pretty much start feeding the next wire directly from that same outlet and leading you to the next one. And then you go back to the first one and cut it off. Oh, and something to keep in mind with a half inch uh, staple, you are actually allowed to use two wires on top of each other and that's okay. So I was finally ready to make my way the other way and I had to drill through all of the stud under the window, which was not an easy task. So that's when I decided to get creative and probably found some extension back in my garage and really give it a shot to see if it would even work. I don't think my drill is powerful enough for this kind of work, but... <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> it's working! <laughs> no! <laughs> it worked! Well, extreme drilling was 
a success. After that, I was ready to make my way through the cabin, going through all the holes I had drilled, making sure to use a bigger size hole in the corner to make my life a little easier, and then going from one outlet to the other. I obviously had to go over the doorway to be able to reach the outlet to the other side, and then do the same thing over, drill through all those stud packs, drill through my corner, and make my way from one outlet to the other. And usually, you can see I'm leaving six inches of cable sticking out of my outlet. If you're paying attention now, you know, I have all my runs for all my outlets. And what I'm doing here is I'm adding a line in that outlet because I'm gonna come and take power from this outlet to bring power into my four-way switch here. Now that I have brought power into that box, I will have the first wire going to all my recess lights. The first step was obviously to place a mark where I wanted my recess lights to be. I arbitrarily chose 3 foot 6 and so I would know where to drill my holes, which is what you're seeing right now, going through all the holes I would need to make to run my wire to feed into all those recess lights. After that, I was ready to start running the wire. I remember my first circuit. So I'm right here, first light, and then I'm just gonna follow this holder just like that. So you won't have to cut holes everywhere just while you'll have to run this wire. The thing to remember is that once you get to where you're gonna have a light, you're done. You're not pulling this any farther. And then here, I will start another strand starting here that will stop at the next light. And just like that, I'm going to work my way through all my lights in the ceiling. I mean, once you get a hang of it, it's fairly simple. It's very straightforward. And once you get to that last spotlight, it will just be one wire with nothing else uh, going from here. We have to start back here. Remember, that's the power coming in from the outlet below. That's the one that's feeding all my recessed light. And so remember, I'm going to have one for the chandelier in the, over the table and one for the one for the fan over kind of the living area. So we have to start over from here and uh, and you know pull the cable where it needs to be. I try and uh, reuse this hole, and I'm also gonna reuse the hole I made right here. I want my fan to be here, so I decided I'm gonna play. You know, I'm kind of centering it on my windows, and then I'm gonna center it on the rafter, and it's gonna hang down straight down from here. I'm doing the same thing here for the chandelier. I'm just going from the switch box directly to where my chandelier will be placed over the kitchen area. And this one is the last switch which will feed two lights which will be by the front doors. So I have not installed any electrical boxes yet for those lights. I'm just leaving two wires right now exposed on the inside because I will put the electrical box on the outside directly flush to the siding. And just like that, we're done with circuit one, which believe it or not, circuit one alone took 250 feet of wire, which I really thought just 250 feet was gonna be enough for the whole cabin. Yeah, that was completely wrong. So circuit number two is my outdoor circuit because I'm gonna have outside receptacles. And so that's what that circuit will be dedicated to. So again, I'm gonna have an outside uh, you know, power access here because I might want to be putting a floodlight or, um, you know, probably more like a, a ring, you know, camera system. So it's going to go from here into here. Then on the outside of the cabin, I'm going to have an outside receptacle because this is actually required by code. Uh, so that's going to get connected to that. And then lastly, I was thinking about putting an outlet on the eve of this cabin on this side because let's say that I wanted to put you know some decoration light around the roof line of the cabin then I could easily just plug it in right here under the soffit instead of trying to you know play with some extension call so connected to that and again I mean I think to keep everything simple I'm also going to make this a 20 amp and then the only difference is that you know uh, those outlet will have to be, uh, you know, ground fault protected just because they're outside and they could be potentially exposed to moisture. Probably wondering why I didn't put all this stuff on circuit one and keep my life easier. Well, the reason was that what if something trips the breaker outside? I didn't want it to lose all the power of all the lights in the cabin. So on that circuit, I will have an outlet which is placed right there, which will be on the outside. 
and after that I was running my wires to the other side where I will place probably a ring light right there where you see the hero and the last one was actually going all the way to the other side and that's where I will put an outlet to have either more camera or more light system. Now that I start adding a lot of wires together it's definitely a good time to start numbering your wires with a number. I mean, for me, I'm just using my circuit number so that I can keep track of what's what. So circuit number three is gonna be my first kitchen circuit. The kitchen is actually right here on this wall. And per code, you actually need two circuits for your kitchen for the receptacles. And the reason is, well, what do you usually plug in kitchen? Well, toaster oven and microwave and you know a fridge so all that stuff can pull a lot of powers for that reason that's why they require you to have at least two circuit so i'm gonna start here i'm gonna go all around here i'm probably gonna through go through this bathroom wall and then here will i be and then i'll have one outlet here for the fridge and then i'll put one outlet here which will be an over uh, over the counter outlet for you know probably a microwave to be honest so this is going to be a 20 amp, so 12-2 wire, and this also needs to be arc fault protected, but also ground fault protected, because you're going to be next to water with that kitchen sink, so I mean, it's the whole nine yard. So arc fault, ground fault. Circuit number four is going to be my second kitchen circuit. So, I mean, you know, kind of silly, but pretty much the same thing. And then, you know, two other receptacles, uh, one that will be on the other side of the sink, still a counter, over-the-counter receptacle, and then I'll probably have a receptacle, you know, under the sink for whatever reason if I need to plug anything. This is going to be a 20 amp, 12-2 uh, wire, and again, this is going to have to be alk fold, ground fold protected. So I'm now running the first circuit for the kitchen. So you can see that I'm, I've drilled all the holes. You can put two wires into a three-quarter of an inch hole. Uh, so that's really useful to know and then I just kept going through actually the ceiling of the bathroom and all the way to my kitchen wall. So I'm at the point where you've seen me, I'm you know starting to really put the wires in the kitchen wall but I'm trying to really think where my outlets are going to go which is why as you can see here I've drawn my kitchen plan because you need to know what your kitchen is going to look like and where the outlets are going to be, where your free counter space is going to be. I mean, where are you going to put the coffee machine? Where are you going to put the toaster? And where do you need those, uh, those outlets? But now here's the kicker. Uh, most of the outlets in the kitchen actually fall in between studs uh, because I need them to be kind of at very specific spots so that it makes sense and it looks good. So what I was about to do is kind of, you know, I was going to add um, you know, pieces of two by six in between my studs to, uh, so that I have something to nail my outlets to. But I'm also trying to think about the bathroom as well, because let's keep that in mind. You know, there's going to be a shower, a toilet and a sink right behind this wall. And you know, I, that's what I wanted to check because what if I get to the point where I get to the plumbing and there's a stud in the way wherever I'm supposed to install all the shower stuff it's going to be a problem. And so that's actually what I just figured out right now. Uh, the shower is three feet. So if I'm looking right here, 36 inches, I mean, technically you're going to have the valve dead in the middle of that. So more or less at 18 inches and look where 18 inches land exactly at that stud, which is going to be a big mess to work around. So right now what I'm about to do is I'm going to remove this stud and I'm going to put two new stud right here. And actually this is helping me out because based on my kitchen plan, my first outlet is going to be here at seven and a half inches. So actually I'm going to take that as an opportunity to put another stud right here where I need it for my outlet. So remember, you always have to be aware of what's going to be the finished material on your wall. On the kitchen wall, I decided I was going to go with some fake stone cladding. I really have to push my outlet uh, to match that depth. Okay, so the next outlet is going to be left of the sink. Just place this one. And then I'm going to have another two outlet up here on this corner top. I hope this was a good idea. I don't really know. But that's the only way I could think about putting an outlet somewhere else. So there it is. So I was finally ready to install the outlet box. This one that you were seeing me install and the one next to it will be in between the kitchen sink and the oven top. The one 
at the bottom is actually going to be under the sink and the one all the way to the left is actually the one that will be powering the fridge then after that i was just ready to run all my wires and remember some of those outlets uh, are not all on the same circuit they're actually on two circuits because that's what you need in your kitchen okay number five so circuit five is going to be my it's going to be my bathroom circuit so according to code saying they have kind of rules you need two circuits for a bathroom the receptacles need to be on just one one circuit this is kind of silly in my opinion for my case because i have a small cabin there's only going to be one receptacle and you know a fan and, and one light so that's not much at all so actually if you really dig into the code they let you use just one circuit if you're only going to feed into one bathroom i mean which is super helpful so it's going to go here and then this time uh, we're going to have uh, a receptacle which is going to be ground fault protected we're going to have one light switch well actually two light switches one light above uh, the, the bathroom sink and then here oh yeah i showed this and then here is going to be uh you know your vent fan one switch for that and then one switch for that light uh, the bathroom is going to be also a 20 amp circuit so 12 to wire but here it is this doesn't this is not required to be arc fault protected per code requirement i don't know why but that's what i read online so the only thing is this receptacle needs to be ground fault protected that's the only requirement for for the bathroom so if you're interested in getting the cabin drawing definitely go on my website which is www.thediycabinguide forward slash blueprint here you'll be able to enter your email get the blueprint for this cabin that i'm building and then you'll also be directly added on to my emailing list where i send a monthly newsletter where i usually send an updated breakdown of my budget so if you want to know how much i've spent on this cabin that's the best way so i'm now ready to start with the electrical system for the bathroom and it's fairly easy in my opinion because we're gonna have a double gang here with a switch two switches uh here then we're gonna have an outlet right here and then we're gonna have a light here just above the future vanity and then the last thing here in this bathroom is going to be a fan somewhere in the ceiling i'm placing my uh the top of my boxes at 48 inches here for both the double gang and uh, where I'm gonna put the outlet. And the light is gonna be uh, more or less centered on 80 inches on this stud, which actually falls perfectly <laughs> at the middle of where my vanity is gonna go. So that was, I was really glad that fell. Perfect. Do you see the stud is where I was uh, planning on putting my outlet? It feels kind of close to the corner here. So I'm tempted to just add a piece here, which I don't know if that's allowed, but I'm probably still gonna do it and do this so that I have a little more room and same here hey can you guess what's gonna happen ah oh, it broke another one that broke and I don't have another one I think ah well that's fine we'll just have to get another one later on I didn't have the courage to go back to Lowe's to get a two gang box so I went ahead and kept going I installed my receptacle box and also my wall light box you kind of know how it goes at this point so I just drilled more holes installed another line right above what I've done in the past because you can only put two wires per uh, three quarter of an inch hole this time I went above the bathroom uh, doll and then you know I have this dangling uh, wire you're seeing which is actually where my uh, fan is going to be and then I just kept wiring the rest going through where my two gang box is going to be and then my outlet and to finish with my wall light circuit six so circuit number six is actually be going to be the circuit feeding my attic because this little small attic is going to need a light it's going to need a light switch and I'm probably going to also add a receptacle just because so it's going to go here same through the back wall and then up here we'll have a light switch and we'll have a receptacle and then i'll probably have you know a light here which is fed by that light switch and again let me see so uh, similarly to the kitchen this circuit doesn't need to be arc fault protected i mean i think i'm gonna run everything 20 m but you know i mean 15 is more than enough but 20 m 12 2 wire and no need for any special arc fault or ground fault so we're covered so now we're kind of going into the spe the specialty circuit um circuit seven is going to be 
in my kitchen right here right, right where i'm standing i'm gonna have uh, a small electric cooktop so that you can boil water or do basic cooking and obviously you need a separated circuit just for that so again it's gonna have to run all the way here this is getting crowded but <laughs> that's just how it is and then here it's you know you have three lines because this one is gonna have to be a 240 volt uh, circuit so as far as amperage i think it's only needs to be 20 amp 12 to but 240 volt so that means that it's going to be a double pole breaker not a single pole breaker so circuit eight is going to be the water eater uh, so again it's going to run all the way and it's going to be up there in that attic space again it's just going to be a 240 volt so it depends what kind of water eater you're going to pick but in my case i believe that it's going to be a 25 amp breaker so it's gonna have to be a 10 to wire because we're over 20 amp and it's also gonna have to be 240 volts so double pole breaker and this one doesn't need to be ground fault or arc fault protected last circuit circuit number nine this is for my mini split system this uh, cabin is going to be cooled and heated with a uh, you know very energy efficient heat pump and so I obviously need a dedicated circuit for it. All I knew is that the compressor would be outside on the rear corner, so that's where I stopped the wire. Eventually, I would poke a hole through the wall and I will have a disconnect there to feed into the compressor. And this one, again, it depends what kind of system you're gonna use, but let me check my notes. So my mini split that I looked up online was gonna be a 20 amp, so 12 to wire, but still 240 volts, so double pole breaker as well, and no need to have ground fault or arc fault protection. So this was definitely a lot of information. Click here on that link that will take you to the next video where I will cover how uh, I connected all of my nine circuits to the electrical panel using all the correct breakers. So we will cover arc fault, ground fault protected breaker, as well as single and double poles, plus a lot more tips and tricks. So definitely click there and I will see you in that video.